Hi everyone, I'm Linda from Colorworks Designs and welcome back into week number three of the Mod Blossom Quilt Along. This week is all about making these beautiful leaf blocks that you see behind me. So let's get started right away. Right, for your leaf block, which is this week's block, you're going to need eight background template C's, uh, two ten and a quarter inch squares from each of your coordinating fat quarter fabrics, so that would make a total of four, and your four leaf center four and three quarter inch squares, two of each of those fabrics. And the very first step to making the leaf block is to make half square triangles. So we're going to go ahead and pair up one dark value, one light value square, ten and a quarter inch squares together, uh, and you'll do that twice. And then we're going to also make half square triangles out of our leaf centers at the same time because it's just much easier work. So you're going to want to take your lighter fabric and you're going to want to draw a diagonal line on the back. You can see I'm going from point to point. Same thing with your four and three quarter inch lighter value square. And then you're going to just simply pair up these squares with their partner, which is the other darker fabric. Put them right sides together and we're just going to sew a quarter inch to either side of those lines and then we'll cut it apart and square it down. So I'm over at my machine and remember the general rule of thumb on half square triangles is you're going to draw that diagonal line with a washable pen on the wrong side of one of your fabrics and then we're just going to sew a quarter inch to either side of this line and then cut it apart on that line. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I would do that on both my um, large 10 and a quarter inch uh, hat, uh, squares. I'm also going to do it while I'm here at my sewing machine on my uh, leaf center blocks. This is the two blue squares that I've paired together that are four and three quarter inches uh, by four and three quarters. Again, I've drawn my diagonal line and I'm going to sew uh, a quarter inch down either side of this line as well. And we'll do this twice as well. So the first step after I've sewn a quarter inch to either side of my drawn line is I need to cut all these um, squares apart. So we're going to do that first. And we'll just take this one first. So the first step is cut the square apart. That will create two half square triangles. And you can see once I've got that cut apart, I've got two triangles. And when I unfold it and press it to the dark side, I've got a half square triangle block. So I'm going to go press this and then we're going to square these down to nine and a half by nine and a half inches. So I have pressed my half square triangles to the darker fabric and now I'm going to square them down to nine and a half. So I have my nine and a half inch square ruler here. If you've never squared down or need a refresher course on how to use a square ruler, you can see there's going to be plenty of fabric to cut away here. So you're going to place the diagonal line of your square ruler along the diagonal line of the block. Even if you're using a twelve and a half inch square ruler, you would still do this. And you're going to trim uh, very, the very first trim you're going to make is on the right side and a top on top and that will create some clean edges for you. So make sure your diagonal line is going down the diagonal line of your half square triangle and then trim away on the right. This is if you're right handed. If you're left handed you'll be coming the opposite direction and you take those away. Now you have a nice clean edge right here and here so you don't want to cut towards yourself unless you have a rotating mat then you rotate. You would rotate the block 180 degrees just like that. Line up the uh, diagonal line again along the diagonal line of the block and then because I'm using a nine and a half inch square ruler here I want to line the edges of the ruler up along those clean edges I just cut. Now if I were using a bigger ruler like a twelve and a half inch square ruler I would line up the nine and a half inch increments along the clean edges. Okay so you can use a bigger ruler you don't need to always buy the same size you're squaring down to. Once I line all that up I cut away the right again and I cut away the top edges and now I have this super clean perfect nine and a half inch by nine and a half inch half square triangle. I'm going to continue to do that on the remaining three leaf uh, blocks and then I'm going to do it also on my blue um, leaf centers and those are going to get squared down to uh, four inches by four inches.
Right, the next step to making our leaf block is now that you've squared your half square triangles down to nine and a half by nine and a half, you need to grab template D. Template D, if you brought the PDF, should be taped together. This is what it looks like. If for some reason you looked at my error or um, correction page on the website and were wondering if there was a revision to template D, the only revision to template D was that this mark here and here, here, and here, not the template size, just where the marks land on the template was off on the very, very first revision of this pattern. So if you want to double check, this mark should be four and a half inches from the point. Four and a half inches over would be the mark. That's the revised measurement. Um, so that helps you line up your um, L shape, which we'll get to in just a minute. We need to cut out this shape from our half square triangles. So you want to lay template D out on your first half square triangle leaf and and you can see I'm going to match point to point and the diagonal line is running along the diagonal line of the block there. You can see it right under there. So I'm running in the same orientation as my diagonal line on my block. I'm just going to draw around this curve here, draw around this curve here, and I'm also going to transfer all these markings. So the center mark is tr very important here on here, and then this mark like I said, is four and a half inches from the tip. So if you want to use a ruler, if that helps you better, to just grab a ruler and measure four and a half inches over and make a mark, you can do that. Or you can use the transfer marks that are on the template. Once you get done transferring the template curve and the markings that mark center and four and a half inches to either side of the tip, you're ready to cut this apart. If you don't feel very good about using your rotary cutter to cut curves, I wouldn't do it. I would use a pair of scissors instead. I feel okay, but you're going to notice if I use my rotary cutter, I'm keeping my hands really clear of the cutting board. They're not even on the cutting board. And I'm just got gliding my rotary cutter blade along that curved line there. And I get that shape. And now I'm just going to flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. Again, my fingers are clear of the cutting board. So in case an accident happens, I won't cut myself. And there you go. I've got my first leaf shape. And I'm going to do that to all four of the half square triangle uh, leaf blocks. Right, so the next thing to do is to actually stitch the L shapes, which were template C, to our leaf shapes, which are template D. So we're going to, we've got our marks on either side of our leaf shape here that we transferred from template D. And we're going to take our L shapes and you're just simply going to fold them in half, as you can see. You can do this over at the iron and create a crease mark right there. Um, if you want to, you can mark uh, with a marker, like a washable marker on the back of the L shape. These are then going to go right sides together on the L sh on the leaf shape. And you're going to match up the center point first and put a pin there. Let me bring that up towards the camera. And then you're going to simply take these ends of the L shapes and match them to those outer marks that were on the leaf shape. Remember, these outer marks are about four and a half inches from the tip of the leaf. When you get done pinning, uh, usually, and you can put more pins here if you feel like you need to. You could even give it a dab of glue across the edges if you need to. I like to just do the three pins. When you get done pinning a leaf shape to either side, uh, sorry, an L shape to either side of your leaf shape, then you're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this curve. And um, the main thing is to try to keep at least these three anchor pins in place as you sew the curve. So I'm over at my machine here and I've got my L shape pinned in three places. Again, if you want to pin a couple more here along the edge, you can. I've also got my handy tweezers here. These are just some eyebrow tweezers. I like these because um, they help me uh, grab the edge of this fabric and, you know, 
put the two edges together. And that's what I'm going to do. And they also help me move this L shape along a little bit at a faster rate. I can like pick up the L shape and kind of give it a little nudge forward here and there. Because if anything's going to creep on you, it's going to be the L shape. It's going to actually want to grow longer than it is because it's on the bias edge here. And that's why it's really important to try to keep these pins in place because you really don't want this, this uh, L shape to move Law, make uh, grow larger. You want it just to maintain its shape and kind of curve itself around the edge of the leaf. So the tweezers kind of help me do that. You can do this with a stiletto too. Um, and so I, where I need to stop, I do, and I just kind of uh, smooth out any puckers. And again, I'm kind of just helping that L shape move at a little bit faster rate. Um, sometimes when you do curves too, it looks like you're going to get a pucker and you don't when you actually remove your pins and go press. So just um, maintain your quarter inch as you come around the curve the best you can. We've given you a lot of leeway on this pattern because this will actually get trimmed down when we're done. So if it's not a perfect quarter inch, it's not going to matter because it gets trimmed. But what does matter is that the L shape actually end start and end on those outer edges which are four and a half inches from the tip. Um, that does matter in making the block go together a lot more smooth when you're done. Now I'm just going to take that over to the ironing board and press it towards the L shape. So you can see that I have pressed the seam of the um, L shape and the leaf towards the L shape or towards your background fabric there. Um, sometimes it helps if you give it a little finger coaxing before you put it under the iron. A little steam helps that too. You shouldn't need to clip this curve whatsoever. Um, and that's what our L shape looks like now. Uh, or our leaf block looks like once we've put the L shape to either side of the leaf. Um, and now we just need to square it back down to make it a nice nine and a half inch by nine and a half inch block. So if you have your nine and a half inch ruler, you would just stick it right back up on your leaf block there and line up the diagonal line again with the diagonal line of the leaf. The uh, tips of the leaf at the top right and bottom left should fit snugly and neatly along the edges of your nine and a half inch square ruler. If you're using something larger than a nine and a half inch square ruler, um, then you would just line up the top right tip uh, to the edge of the ruler and track the nine and a half inch line straight and true across this bottom tip here, the bottom left tip. What we're actually going to trim off here is the L shape in the bottom right and the top left. So once you line up your square ruler, you just simply take your rotary cutter and trim away that side there. And then I'm going to rotate this block so I'm not cutting against myself. I don't want to make any cutting mistakes here. So now I've trimmed that side and I just rotate 180 degrees, unless you're on a rotating mat, which really helps. And I line back up the uh, square ruler on the block. So this should all track straight and true across the nine and a half inch line. Your diagonal line should still be tracking straight down the diagonal line of the leaf block. And anything that is uh, pe peeking out on the bottom here gets trimmed away. So just one look and we trim away that. I come across the bottom again, like so. And now I have a perfectly trimmed exact nine and a half by nine and a half inch leaf. And I'm going to do that on the remaining three leaf blocks. And then we'll get ready to snowball the centers, which will create that pinwheel in the middle. So the last step to our leaf block before you can put it all together is I've got my four nine and a half inch leaf quadrants here. And I've put them out on my cutting board in formation, meaning that the uh, two oranges are alternating. I don't want um, similar oranges together like that. I want them to alternate like that. So I have, you know, light orange, dark orange, light orange, dark orange. I also need to snowball the centers first. So that's why I put it in formation. I want to make sure that I've got these um, half square triangles that we created 
uh, a while ago as our leaf centers, I want to make sure I place them the right way because they're also going to create a pinwheel in the middle. And you can see from this particular half square triangle for my leaf center, I've actually marked a diagonal line going in the opposite direction of the seam line. That's the diagonal line that I'm going to actually sew on. However, I've got a little tip for you when we get over to the sewing machine. But I want to make sure that I place these in the right place. And I've already got one set up here that's sewn on. So it's it's actually going in the opposite direction or in the, the seam line is actually going uh, in the same seam line as the leaf block but you can see when I when I sew across that diagonal line and then flip the edge over it's going to snowball the uh, center corner of that leaf quadrant and what I want to make sure is when I place this one here that I've got the light blue pairing up to the dark blue there. So I need to, to set it up like so, so when it flips over, you can see that it will create a pinwheel. And the same for when I place these two. So when I place this one in, shape, in place right here, and I would pin these in place, let's see, it goes like that. And when it flips, it's light blue, so that works. There's dark blue, see that? And then when I place the very last one in place, it has to be, I believe, let's see, like, oops, nope, nope, like that, I think, light blue, so that when this flips, yep, there it is, light blue, dark blue, light blue, dark blue, light blue, dark blue, and see, it alternates. So we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'll show you my little tip for snowballing corners. I do them just a little bit differently. And so over at my sewing machine now, I'm going to sew uh, snowball this corner. And again, my tip is I don't want to sew directly on the line that I've drawn. That's my guideline. I want to sew a hair, and I mean a hair, uh, below the line or towards the tip that this is going to flip over to. So since I'm flipping this going to eventually over to here, I want to sew on this side of the line. And it would be the opposite depending on where it flips. Notice also that when I place these half square triangles, I try to place them so that their seam lines of the half square triangle here, the, the, the snowballed center, the leaf center, is this seam line, this seam is going in an opposite direction as my leaf center is. See that? That will help also the block um, press out flatter and neater when you put it together. So I just line up the edges here and I'm going to get ready to snowball this on. I'm going to sew a hair to this side. Okay, so I just guide down there. It's about, oh, I don't know, a hair and a sixteenth of an inch. What that does is it allows the the fabric that flips over to the to the eventual corner here um, to actually meet the edge. Um, a lot of times the thread and also that extra fabric flipping over that fold will take up seam allowance and you'll never meet the corner here eventually. So this allows that to happen for you. So now that I've actually sewn a little bit below or beyond the line, not on the line, I've taken it over to the um, iron and I've made sure that when I flip this tip out and I've pressed this that it's meeting or matching exactly the edge there. I now feel confident that I can cut away this excess and not lose or misshape my block. So when I cut away the excess to reduce the bulk and then flip that back out, I now have a nine and a half inch, nine and a half inch square still, or I should. And if you want to, you can give it a cursory check with your square ruler. And we're going to do this on each and every leaf block, and then we'll start to assemble the leaf block back together. On two of these leaf blocks in the opposing corners, meaning let's say upper right, lower upper left, lower right, you're going to want to repress your seam in the opposite direction. And that will make the block go together that much better. Okay, so I've snowballed the center uh, corners of each of my leaf blocks here. And I've also repressed the um, uh, the opposing corners, if you will, or the opposite corners to each other in opposite directions. I've repressed the seam of the snowball in the opposite direction of, let's say, this seam. See how this is pointed? 
towards the center. This is now pointed towards the orange fabric here. And I've done that on this block and this block where I've repressed those seams in the opposite direction. Um, that will make your block go together uh, that much smoother as well because when seams go in opposite directions of each other, they nest much more neatly. Now it just goes together like a four patch, um, although it, where you put these two together and then these two blocks together and then the two rows come together. Uh, when you finish this, it should be about 18 and a half inches by 18 and a half inches. Um, what I'm going to do is take this over to my sewing machine and show you how you navigate around these bulky edges here. But you're going to want to probably pin here as you put these two right sides together. This should nest together here at this seam where the um, center points come together in the pinwheel and also where the L shapes come together. And that's a a kind of a prime target to um, your quarter inch seam getting a little bit off because there's a lot of bulk there. But let's head over to the sewing machine and I'll show you that. So you can see I've got this um, these two leaf blocks now that are right sides together pinned in a couple different places. One up here um, where the pinwheel comes together near the center. My seams are going in opposite directions there. One right here at the end or corner of the pinwheel. This is the, the leaf center. And then one right here where the L shapes come together. Um, that is a bulky piece to sew through. And you'll find that if you don't pin there, and also if you go too fast over that area, um, it'll throw your quarter inch seam allowance off. You might actually get less than a quarter inch seam allowance and that creates kind of a strange appearance. So as you sew through these, you just want to go slow over all these hills and bumps and pins if you can leave in place. Again, maintaining your quarter inch seam allowance as you navigate down the line. So there you go. You can see as I take it out of my machine that, you know, these points are matched nicely because they were pinned and the seams are going in opposite directions. Again, these are matched nicely because the seams are going in opposite directions. Now, some people fret, and it happened here, over the L shapes, not evenly uh, disappearing together. Meaning, if you look at my block here, the left side appears that the L shape is just a little bit longer, like it's not disappearing at the same rate as the right side. I really wouldn't fret over this too much, although some people do. You can certainly seam rip that out and try it again. It creates, you probably need a couple more pins there, maybe a bigger seam allowance. But a lot of times too, that will actually correct itself with pressing. And I have found after making so many of these blocks over the uh, last couple years, that if you just look at that and okay, you can see that the left side is not is not evenly disappearing uh, at the same rate that the right side is, then if I just press it towards the left side, the, the one that has the bigger L shape or the one that's not disappearing, it tends to go away. And, you know, there's there's a certain point here where you have to balance out the joy of sewing uh, versus perfection, too. Um, so uh, this, this most of the time will work. If it doesn't, I really wouldn't fret too much about it unless it's very egregious. And um, just allow the pressing to do its work, which was if I do press that over to the left side, um, you can see that it, it pretty much disappears. And by the time it gets quilted, it's going to look fantastic. So there is my finished uh, leaf block, my first one, and um, it measures 18 and a half by 18 and a half. Um, I did break the center seam here. I fanned the center seam. And the way you do that is when it comes out, when you put the two rows together, right, top and bottom, keep it folded when it comes out of your machine and just break the top two stitches right there above the seam line that you just sewed. Once you break those top two stitches or, or um, st stitch, uh, rip them away, uh, you fan opposite directions. This is going this way, this is going this way, and you should, um, you should have a little pinwheel that appears in the middle and that just creates a flatter center for you. It's called fanning the seam. Um, there's a tutorial on my ColorWorks YouTube channel explaining that as well. And that is our leaf block for week three. So that's it for week number three. Now remember with these leaf blocks you can choose to either snowball the centers just like you see here using the pinwheel effect. You can also just do a single pinwheel which would be three inch squares and that's in your pattern or you can choose not to snowball at all the center of this leaf block and it looks more like a huge leaf itself. 
So that's it for week three. We'll see you back here week number four to make these beautiful, bodacious, big blossom flower blocks. See you next time. Happy Colorishes Quilting, everybody. Mm -hmm.